So I'm back with another short and hopefully interesting video. But first, I just want to say thanks to all of my long-term subscribers that still watch my videos on a regular basis. I know they're not perfect, but I do try to do the best that I can do. I do have limited means here. I have a limited size workbench and all that. And I don't, I don't have various different cameras and microphones. Uh, I have a cheap camera, but it works. Also, I do watch the videos of my subscribers. I don't watch very many other videos, say other electronics channels, unless they're subscribers of mine. Uh, even if I did want to do that, YouTube always recommends videos to me like um, hyenas attack lions in the Serengeti or something like that. Then I end up watching that instead. So back to my original uh, subject here. Not too long ago, I did a video on, I think it was modulation percentage. Or it could have been a little while ago and one commenter noted I didn't really show under modulation and over modulation so I'm just gonna go ahead and show that real quick on the scope how that would look uh, I, I am by no means a modulation expert or anything like that this is really an area that really doesn't interest me that much if for example you have a service manual and you want to do say AM alignment and it says for example um, set the the output generator for 30 percent modulation or something like that well what exactly does that mean and for example why not use 10 percent modulation or why not use a hundred percent or even more than that right so I'm just gonna go ahead and show how the waveforms look real quick and uh, maybe you can see then why you shouldn't for example use 20 percent modulation or you shouldn't run up run it up to a hundred or more percent anyways i made of course another masterpiece here um as far as am am waveforms are concerned basically they consist of two parts the carrier and the audio frequency the audio frequency, if you will, basically that rides, you can say it rides on the carrier. This is the intelligence. Um, this is the information, the audio frequency. Audio frequencies, basically, it could be music, a sine wave, or anything like that. Um, and when you put that together, that kind of looks like this on the scope. It's not pretty, but hopefully you can get the general idea. Okay, off to my next step. So here is the amplitude modulated waveform. The carrier right now is 500 kilohertz and the modulating waveform is 1000 hertz. And I'm going to go ahead and take this down to let's say 10 or 20 percent modulation. Uh, and we can watch here, if we watch here the uh, valleys and peaks that's going to go ahead and disappear. That means, for example, if you're feeding in a signal somewhere and you say you have a loudspeaker or something hooked up to a unit, you're not going to hear anything below a certain percentage. If you turn that modulation down too low, you're going to lose your info right there. See that? So that sound, that, for example, this is a, a sine wave, that's going to be gone or if it would be music or something that would be gone too and you wouldn't get anything out that's why you can't have like really low percentages of modulation now going to the other extreme I think I can go right up to a hundred percent what happens is you get these gaps here in between the waveforms and the more you over modulate the wider these gaps get and that means basically you're going to be missing parts um, basically what's going to happen is say if this was if the generator now was hooked up to say a stereo receiver what we would be getting then part of the waveform would be clipped that's why we don't over want to over modulation um, we don't want any over modulation again like I said I'm not a modulation expert this is just what I picked up uh, along basically my um, line of work so I'm going to go ahead, I made a primitive demodulator, and I'll go ahead, uh, demodulator, of course, that um, 
removes the carrier and that's just basically going to leave us with the audio and you can basically see what happens when I over modulate how that sine wave is going to look so hopefully what I, what I built here on a little breadboard um, is going to work halfway okay so I have the oscilloscope probe hooked up to the little well the detector diode I guess and um, so now we can go ahead and take a look at the um, scope. Now we're taking a look at the scope here and I'm sorry for the shaking. This is shaky cam. I'm holding this with my arm. I'm sitting down below. So I'm going to make this quick. Now this is basically under modulation here. Not enough modulation. Notice what happens to our information here. If the, if we could hear the sine wave coming out of the speaker, that speaker would get quieter and quieter because basically we're losing the information, the intelligence. Now going in the opposite way, we watch the sine wave and we can look here, see for example on the bottom here we've got distortion. Uh, that's why we don't want to over modulate anything. Um, hope that kind of makes sense. You can see here again what happens. Uh, that's why we don't want that. I had shown that just a minute ago with the modulated waveform. We were getting like a gap uh, in between the different uh, waveforms. That is that gap that you're, I guess, seeing right there. One more thing. Um, I also have a cheap digital oscilloscope, which I basically have just used one single time. This is the second time now. I just played around with it for a couple minutes. So I have to kind of like learn the thing because it is a little bit different than the analog oscilloscope. A uh, gentleman had asked me, well, is this a good scope to buy? Um, personally, I prefer a analog scope. Uh, he wanted to know if this would be suitable, I guess, for doing electronics work. Um, well, it is a cheap oscilloscope, so basically you get what your money buys. For me, this is good enough, but I think the analog scope will be my main um, scope to work with. This is the same waveform that we just saw a minute ago or so. Now, for contrast, I'll go ahead and show the analog scope again. Now, here's the analog scope here. And this is what I actually prefer to use and I actually use most of the time. I got the second scope because uh, I might like redo this oscilloscope and it might be down for a while and I need something in the meanwhile. Again, as I said, it's a matter of preference, but I just prefer this and that oscilloscope, the digital one that you just saw, that's about the cheapest one you could uh, buy. I think there's some YouTube videos out on that. I haven't really looked at them. It didn't really influence my decision. Anyways, this is nothing to do with the uh, subject earlier. This is just because some uh, gentleman had asked me that question. Thanks for watching.